When I cried to the Lord, he heard my voice. He rescued me from those who attack me. Entrust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. My brothers and sisters, we now are in the season of Lent, and we are beginning the countdown towards the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, preparing ourselves to offer ourselves into his service and to receive the love which he shows for us at Easter. We are aware that as we place ourselves before him, so often we have fallen away from him in our thoughts, words and actions. Let us offer those times of failing to our loving Saviour and ask for his mercy and his forgiveness. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Create in me a new heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let's pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you, and by you be brought to completion. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Well, folks, here we are, Thursday night. Um, it's been a nice, bright, sunny day down in uh, Plymouth, I have to say. Um, there's snow and all kinds of weather going on in the world. We seem to have done all right down here, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, <laughs> what have we uh, got today? Well, we are uh, on uh, Mark's Gospel, and, of course, there it is on his sheet, which uh, you should be able to see a bit into the details below. You might have received it, or it's off the website. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verses 12 to 15, if you've got your pew Bibles out, page 812. I can't give you any more help than that. You have to go and look for it yourself. <laughs> so, uh, however, um, it might it doesn't take too long, this one. He says, the short ones, of course, are always the ones that seem to challenge us. So, uh, first things first, I'm going to read through it for you. Read through it for you. And as you listen to it, or as you read it with me... Um, just uh, think to yourself, how do you feel? How do you feel? First impressions. The Spirit immediately drove Jesus out, out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news to, of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. That's it. That is it. Um, <laughs> just when we got going, uh, that was it. So let's... Um, <laughs> I know. Sometimes completely dazzled by what we get for a Sunday. Uh, other times not. So what do you reckon? Um... When you first hear that, or you're sitting there going, well, that's it, I'll put the kettle on now. Um, <laughs> um, we might have heard this, it's interesting. We might have heard it not so long ago, um, but we're coming back to it nevertheless. So let's see how we, different, of course, you'll be able to go and check, won't you? You'll be able to uh, go off here and when you, the, this is finished and go back to uh, early in the year and see if you can see what we said that time, see if anything's changed. I don't know. I'm quite well. I'm curious to see what we can get out of this, uh, certainly with the Lenten theme going on. So that's what we've got. So we use our uh, we use our uh, six W's, of course, 
um, that we should be beneath you there. Uh, who, where, when, what, why and wherefore? Uh, who's in it? Where is it happening? When is it taking place in the Gospel story? What is happening verse by verse? And why is the Gospel writer including the passage? And wherefore? What's it got to do with us? There you go. Uh, the six W's which reveal everything to us. Uh, it has been for years for me, so I'm not going to break the system. Uh, I shall use this till the end, I suspect. Let's see what we've got. Well, pick up. Who is in it? Well, I did muck about a little bit, as you notice, if I was reading the Bible. I did uh, twist it round to make sure we knew who the character was. Uh, him uh, is Jesus. I'm just letting you know that because we'll be able to uh, uh, find that out in question number three. But it's Jesus. Uh, the first thing we've got, we've got the Spirit. Ooh. The Spirit. Um, I'm trying not to try. I can remember what I said the other week. Uh, about this um, the spirit of course this is one of the personas of god um natural for us we understand all of that um uh, because we've uh, we've been told it since moment one and maybe we felt things working so you know um we know of the trinity which the church began, began to get a grip of and understand and discover um but it's interesting at the moment we've got the spirit this is Mark's Gospel. Um, I think it's the first one it times pops up. We'll come back to the moment then. I don't want to get too caught up on that now. Otherwise, we'll answer the whole thing before we get going. Uh, we've got Satan. Whoa. Bam, bam. Um, Satan. Yeah. Is he real? Well, yes. The reality of Satan is real. Uh, Satan is definitely a personification, a picture of everything which is counter God. And uh, how easily we can become part of that, eh? Oh, dear. Um, so uh, uh, that's Satan. Um, if you want to get stories, there are lots of stories and, and, and legends, myths about things, about fallen angels and all stuff like that. Um, you can go for that. And, uh, uh, and you can. Uh, it's all there to help you get this idea. So, uh, but Satan, everything which is against God. Hmm. Uh, I've got wild beasts, wild beasts, they're just wild beasts, not as beasts that are wild, well they're, they're in the wild beasts, um, interesting though, great picture of wild beasts, you know, um, living amongst wolves and uh, stuff like that ain't a great idea, dangerous I suppose is what they are, and then angels, right, angels, we all know this, you all know this, angels are heavenly made creatures, sent to be amongst us whom we recognize um they are not us going up to be angels they are god's created uh, messengers coming down amongst us whom we recognize um you know it's got to look like something you don't want an angel look like a pen you wouldn't understand you think why is the angel why is this trying to communicate something it has to be in, in uh what we recognize in human form so it's very interesting that um whole load of questions about that you know uh, um how angels created what may, uh, what is their makeup their metabolism um do you just as god incubate angels in heaven oh, it didn't matter it doesn't matter they look and they talk and they act like us and they come on behalf of god that'll do that'll do uh verse 14 john oh we know that that's john the yes Heard ya, Baptist, that's right. Um, Fetchingly knows John the Baptist because his name is John and he baptises. Not very often you get a clear cut bit in the Gospels and the, and the Scriptures, I have to say. That's to the point. Well done. Uh, <laughs> and he's the one that baptises Jesus. We know a kinsperson, cousin maybe, um, of Jesus. Um, certainly in the same family. Cause second cousin, we'll argue about this one all night long, but we'll say a cousin, that will do. Uh, then who else have we got? God, God makes an appearance at the end of verse 14. God, there he is. God, short for good. He is the opposite to Satan. He is the one who creates, the one who, who wills, the one who puts love into creation. There we are. And, uh, okay, that's it. Um, right, okay, right, that's it. We ain't got any who's and it's all in the first bit. Where is this happening? Right, okay. Uh, we have to go very quickly to our Bibles there. See if we can get any reference at all. Uh, well, in the f verse 9, 
uh, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee to be um, from Nazareth of Galilee was baptized by John in the River Jordan. That's the river straight down the middle of the Holy Lands. Um, and it always says they came out. We, we don't hit. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's see now. All the people of Jerusalem are coming out to him. So it may be this is where the River Jordan is right down. You got. I'm doing this here. There's Jerusalem. There's uh, there's. See Galilee right up there, and the river goes all the way up. So I reckon it's down about, about here somewhere. I hope that made sense. <laughs> I mean, the, I'm losing the plot here. Um, so maybe maybe where this is happening is down towards Jerusalem, in the lower parts of the River Jordan. There. Right. What have we got next? Um, when when is this taking place in the Gospel story? Okay, it's at the almost beginning yeah for mark's gospel um but sometimes we've got to remember that when we study the gospels for a minute just put aside what you know from the others just to say to yourself i'm reading this one from the first time i'm sitting in my little home in corinth and i've been handed this scroll this uh, parchment with uh, mark's gospel i'll read it for the first time let's just approach this one on its own so for mark's gospel when is it taking place john the baptist appears jesus appears he's baptized and bam that's it None of the Christmas stuff that we know, none of all the angels, shepherds and kings in Matthew and all that stuff, none of the genocides, none of Herod, all that lot, none of that, none of that whatsoever. No growing up, no going to the temple in Luke, none of that. We're none of, we don't want any of that. Get rid of that. Push it out the sides. There we are. This is Mark. Straight to the point. He turns up and this is what happens. Okay. Right. So, number four. What is happening? Let's do it, verse by verse. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. What had happened in the very uh, first, the previous part then, it says, Jesus was baptised, a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. He's baptised, and immediately, here we are, the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. Fascinating. I have to say, I find that fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And the moment you're baptised, no. Stop, brakes go on. You have to do something. Um, I have to say, uh, when I think about when you get ordained, um, you you, uh, you get ordained as, as a deacon uh, and uh, for the first time, and you go into a parish and you, you arrive on the first Sunday and you think you're going to do everything. You know, wow. Um, for moment one, you, you just want to throw yourself straight into the job. Throw yourself into it. You've waited years for this and you want to do everything. And well, we've all done it and we all do it. But actually, that's not really a very good way to do it. Sometimes there's a point of pausing and questioning. It's a really interesting one. Uh, certainly, um, I'm just talking from my point of view, you can answer maybe from how you've responded to being baptised or how you've responded to being confirmed um, or if you're ordained out there how you responded to being or, or, ordained certainly there's always questions about why you respond to God it's part of what we are it's our natural being if you don't question if you don't examine your relationship with God maybe you're not actually giving him any sort of um, uh, any, any respect or, 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 or dignity you know he wants you to look at yourself. God doesn't want automatons. Oh, man. He don't want that. He wants people who are thinking. He wants people who challenge themselves and struggle sometimes. Um, because that makes a better you. Makes a better person. Make, if you're thinking and deciding and working out, you become more rounded. And you can help others on that way. So, it's interesting. Right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, the first thing that happens is to get put aside. Not yet. There's something you need to do. Uh, and I'm very, very, you know, so I, mean, I, think, I think actually we go on pre-ordination retreats, maybe to go and meet one immediately afterwards. Mind you, uh, especially when you're priested and your, 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 uh, your, your boss, training incumbent, immediately wants you to start doing all the services because he's booked his holidays. <laughs> yeah, we've all done it. Okay, I've done it. <laughs> well done, son. Well done, the priesthood. See you in three weeks' time. Um, no, right, okay. So, uh, but Jesus is, goes out, and he goes out into the wilderness. He stops. There has to be a moment where he begins, 
it, to, to engage almost with the reality of what is going to happen. Jesus doesn't just head off to the, to the cross like a good little boy. He has to engage with the reality. So the Spirit drives him out into the wilderness, away from everything, away from what we are expecting, away from the people, away from um, uh, uh, the temptations, away from the lot. Well, temptations, what happens there? But it's away from the world. Now, verse 13, he was in the wilderness for 40 days. Well, hello, right at the beginning of Lent, uh, 40 days, floods and everything. 40 days, a long time, a good long time. Don't work it out in weeks, just to let you know, when all this was written, of course, there was only, uh, uh, I think it was six days a week. <laughs> so we're not 10 months of the year, so a bit confusing. But nevertheless, here we go. Um, he was for 40 days in the wilderness, away from it, tempted by Satan. Very interesting, isn't it? Superhero Jesus? Mm. Sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking that. But so often we see in the Gospels, and in Mark's Gospel a little bit, a bit of a struggle. Ultimately, of course, in a few weeks' time, we're going to end up at Gethsemane. And uh, there's a big struggle with Jesus. We're going to hear Jesus interact with all the apostles and all the stuff that goes on um, leading up to the Last Supper and the stuff with Judas and so forth. When there's the fighting and struggling, um, you do wonder whether, you know, as, as he rode into to Jerusalem Palm Sunday, he was thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind turning around right now. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but the tempted bit is the great test of what you are. I think about back to ordination again, you know, it's actually every year as a priest you ought to sit and go, should I be doing this? That's quite an important question. Um, if you can't find out a reason why you shouldn't, carry on. <laughs> so, yeah. Or why is it a Christian? No, but you know, is this right? You know, how am I responding? None of us are. None of us are brilliant. None of us are brilliant. We all just try and work it out. So, and he was of the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Very interesting. He's set aside, but Mark can't help. Mark cannot help. He's picked up. He's obviously picked up a snippet that Jesus has said. Uh, it could only come from Jesus because there's no one else there. Satan certainly hasn't turned up and told Mark what happened. Um, <laughs> and the beasts can't talk. Well, maybe they can. But Jesus has obviously relayed this to, to, to those that are doing the apostles, to Peter, Andrew, James, John, and so forth. The Gospel of Peter never got taken on, but certainly very similar to Mark. Um, so you can see why. Um, probably picked this up. Uh, Mark did and heard that Jesus said well my father looked after me you know angels came and and and, and, and kept me going you know for th that period of time um, but of course angels are messengers so you know what does that mean prayer doesn't it if angels are waiting on him that's a time of prayer and preparation there you go verse 14 we're still going we're still going. Verse 14, we've jumped ahead now, let right ahead. Uh, we've, had, um, uh, we've got now. Um, John was arrested. Boom. Right, Jesus is back. Dum -ba bam is back. 40 days have gone by. Now, after John was arrested. Very interesting. Uh, it seems quite harsh. I think I probably said this a few weeks ago after Christmas. It's quite harsh, you know. John has to be removed. He has to go. Uh, and he is the, is the is kind of the ultimate Old Testament witness to the Messiah who suffers in the ultimate Old Testament style, which ironically will fall, carry on into the apostles, into the New Testament. There is nothing new, nothing old in persecution. It's part of what we are. It's part of our challenge as being people who trust in God. Um, big ways, small ways, you God bother us. That hurts persecution um so john needs to move verse 14 there john does need to move he needs to step out of the of the narrative a little bit um we get more in the other gospels you know get more in john's gospel and the others you know he must grow greater as i must you know so um that, that kind of that that stuff um I mean, we've just had it a little earlier when he says the one coming after me is more powerful. He says, John says in, when he baptises Jesus. So already there's this shift for the people to see someone new. Um, so what we got? 
Jesus came to Galilee, up north, up the river, up north, proclaiming the good news of God. Good news. Well, good news, of course, is the word gospel, where we get the Greek Roman word gospel from. And of course, God means good news. And uh, I say it's entirely, they've nicked that now, that phrase is completely nicked from uh, the empire language, the good news of Caesar Augustus, which was never normally good news for many people, unfortunately. Um, this is what I've conquered and this is what it will cost you. Um, but nevertheless, it's the good news, the proclamation, the, the, the great something. That the, In fact, it's interesting. It, it, it takes something and makes it powerful, proclaiming the good news of God. What is that good news, I hear you say, because you are a Greek Roman sitting in your living room in Corinth. What is that good news? Well, it's this, and saying, verse 15, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Let's just pull that apart a little bit. The time is fulfilled. Okay. Um, time is fulfilled. That's a present tense, isn't it? Very interesting. Um, the time is fulfilled. What are the people waiting for? You know, what are they waiting for? Yep, the Messiah. The Jewish people have been waiting for the Messiah. Um, not quite sure how he's going to how he's going to come about. They've got snippets of bits from Isaiah and other places. Um, clues as to where we may come from. Bethlehem, we know from one of the other Gospels that we're not talking about. <laughs> Oops, there. You know, um, City David, so forth. But, so we, we know they're expecting the Messiah. We know they're expecting the one to come who is beyond prophets, beyond everything, the one who is about to bring atonement for, for sin uh, and a change to our status with God. So, um, the time is fulfilled. So Something is happening now. The time, the thing you're waiting for is going to happen now. It's going to happen now. It's quite scary news, isn't it? If I said to you, right, don't, don't worry, the end of the world is coming in 35 minutes' time. Ah! <laughs> We'd all go crazy, wouldn't we, you know? Um, I'll open that bottle I've been saving. You know, uh, the, but the time is fulfilled. This is happening now. It's quite t it's a scary thing to hear, really. <clears throat> Especially for a Jew in Galilee um, waiting for this to happen. Oh, it's gone dark. Don't worry, it'll get bright again in a minute. Um, but don't wait for this to happen. And the kingdom of God has come near. Has come near. That's slightly different, isn't it? We've got the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is near. So it's moving away. So we've got time is present. It's near, not here, now. The kingdom of God has come near. Not yet. Uh, and it's, it's a great anticipation that builds up, isn't there? Not, I, mean, I, don't, I hope you feel it when you read through the... the um, the Gospels, and maybe as we're going through Lent, there's a great anticipation as we move towards um, Easter, the anticipation of Easter Day. I think it's 45 or 46 days away now. Um, we're, 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 we're looking forward to that moment. In many ways, I think we'd all want it to come near, wouldn't we? Because we know that could be a different place for us in society then by then. But we can't wait. It's, it's just there, but it's not revealed completely. And Mark's Gospel is this headlong rush to do the crucifixion. It doesn't really mention the resurrection. It just stops when they talk about it's something's happened. It's, it's not there. Um, so there's this, de this headlong rush towards that moment when the kingdom of God is finally here. So again, Mark, Mark at the beginning of the Gospel is, is, is teasing us that it's not there. Jesus is saying it's here, it's near, almost it's almost there. Of course, when the kingdom of God is always going to struggle, isn't it? Because it's, 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 it's here for us, and we aren't the perfect citizens. Far from it. But how will we become those perfect citizens? How can we become the ones who um, fit perfectly within that kingdom? Well, keep reading on is the only way. Well, and then it goes on a little bit. Verse 15, we keep reading on. The next word is really the clues how we do become part of that kingdom. The kingdom makes that final lurch towards us. It comes comes right up uh, in front of us. Repent. Yikes. Priest says, repent. There it is. You get the finger of repentance. Yeah. Um, 
Hope you didn't screenshot that one, sling it over the internet. Uh, but repent, isn't it? Um, that's what Jesus calls it. It's the mark of God's people. It's been the mark of God's people in the Old Testament. They've Time and time, as a people, they go astray and they have to be pulled back. And they often get punished, they suffer, but then they get brought back. But now with Jesus, that repentance of the people, of Israel, which is the, the people of God, uh, now becomes something different. It's almost a bit, it now centers down from the many coming together and living in a, repent, uh, in a place of repentance with God. It becomes individual. Because what will Jesus do? What Jesus will do is open up a communal a communal way to heaven. But you follow it as an individual, as well. Can't just join the church and go to heaven. You can do that, join the church, but you have your journey to make too. Wow. Okay. Right, well, all that, and we've there's only th I mean, three verses, and we're still going strong, aren't we? Um, repent and believe in the good news. Well, believe in the good news. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit of a bit of a trial to believe in the good news. Believe the gospel straight out. Often takes a bit of a way. Do you believe wholeheartedly every single thing that you hear in the gospel? Um, do you believe wholeheartedly everything that Jesus calls you to do and do it regardless? Ah, we all struggle. A bit like Jesus has shown us by being driven out to be tempted. So that is why the next W, the fifth W, why is the gospel right in the passage? Well, we are beginning the journey, and it's uh, we're beginning the journey in the gospel of Mark. We're beginning the journey to the cross in the gospel of Mark. All, they, all, the, all the gospels have that destination there. So we start that journey, and so I'll just put it down there and so mark starts us with this um another one a challenge from jesus the kingdom of god believe in the good news but it also starts us with a little bit of um uh, encouragement that we will find the journey at times very difficult and struggle and say well where is god um, when everything is happening back to job the other week so wherefore what's it got to do with us how do you feel now um short gospel does it give you encouragement does it make you feel secure um, do you feel lost or do you feel encouraged uh, or do you feel curious curious five weeks to go i've watched my hair get longer over the next five weeks as we, as we approach easter um five weeks ago to be curious to take strength from what jesus will do and allow him to help you on your way can you do it on your own no the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. It's not the Spirit of just for Jesus. The Spirit is there for you. We'll be all right. Let's hang in there, see what happens. Wow, three verses. Peace be with you and also with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it can become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it can become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Regard with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings we set upon your sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations, may give honour to your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the work on works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels, archangels, with thrones, dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was, betrayed, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Dying, he destroyed our death. Rising, he restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy, and all your people, whom you call to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary, the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we have the confidence to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Create a pure heart for me, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me.
So let us pray. Having received the blessing of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may be always be for us a source of pardon and salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May Christ grant you holiness to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.